In this video, I'm going to explain how to find the limiting value of a sequence. There are some exam questions in this video's description that you can try afterwards. Let's imagine we had a sequence with nth term n plus 2 over 2n plus 1. Let's start generating some of the terms. So the first term we replace n for 1, so we have 1 plus 2 over 2 lots of 1 plus 1, which would give you 3 over 3, which is 1. The second term we replace n for 2, so we'd have 2 plus 2 over 2 lots of 2 plus 1, which gets you 4 over 5, which is 0 0.8. The third term, 3 plus 2 over 2 lots of 3 plus 1, is 5 over 7, which gets you this decimal. Now I'll continue the sequence on for you. This would be the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. And another 8 terms all the way up to the 16th term would look like this. You can see we started at 1 and the numbers are getting smaller and smaller as we increase the value of n. This pattern would continue with the 20th, 30th, 40th, 50th, 60th, 70th, 80th, 90th and even 100th term. And then we can go further, the 1000th, 10,000th, 100,000th, the millionth term and even the billionth term. What you can see here is that as we make n very, very large, the sequence gets very, very close to 0 0.5. There is a reason for this. When we did the billionth term, we did 1 billion add 2, divide by 2 times a billion add 1, which is 1 billion and 2, divide by 2 billion and 1, which came out as 0 0.5000000001. So extremely close to 0 0.5. What we find is this fraction here is very close to 1 billion over 2 billion, which of course would equal 1 half. What's happening here is as we make n very, very large, this plus 2 and this plus 1 become less and less significant. In fact, if we make n tend towards infinity, the plus 2 and plus 1 become completely insignificant, in which case we're left with n over 2n. Of course, n over 2n simplifies down to give you one half. We call one half the limiting value of this sequence. We can't actually achieve the value half, it would be the limit of the sequence as n tends towards infinity. So we could write, for this sequence, as n tends towards infinity, the limiting value of the sequence is equal to one half. You could think of it as the number that we get extremely close to for really, really big values of n. Now let's try and find the limiting values for these sequences. So in this first one, what you're looking for is the terms that don't have n in them, just this negative 5 and this positive 3. They're the terms that will become less significant as we make n larger. So if we ignore those, we end up with 6n over 2n, and then if we cancel out the n's, we end up with 6 over 2, which is 3. So the limit of this sequence, as n tends towards infinity, is 3. We'll try this next one. Now we've only got the plus 5 on the bottom here, so we would end up with 3n over 4n. Cancel out the n, so you've got 3 over 4, which is 3 quarters, so 0 0.75. For this next one, you have to be careful with the negatives. We would lose the 8 and the negative 1, leaving us with negative 2n over 5n. Cancel out the n's, and you've got negative 2 over 5, which is negative 0 0.4. For this final one, it's the 4 and the negative 9. So we've got 9n over 2n, cancel out the n's, 9 over 2 is 4.5. For these ones we have some n squareds, but you do them in pretty much the same way, it's just the last one here that's a bit tricky. So for this first one it's the negative 1 and plus 4, so we would end up with 5n squared over 2n squared, cancel out the n squareds and you have 5 over 2, which is 2.5. For the next one it's the plus 1, so we have 8n squared over 4n squared, Cancel out the n squareds, and we have 8 over 4, which is 2. For the next one, be careful with the negatives, it's just the 10 here. So it's negative n squared over 2n squared. Cancel out the n squareds, and you have negative 1 half, or negative 0 0.5. Now this last one can be a little bit tricky. Now clearly, the negative 3 here is going to be a term that becomes less significant, so we will ignore that. But what about the 9n on the bottom? Well, if you compare what happens to n squared and 9n, you'll get an idea. So if we start with n equals 1, n squared is 1, and 9n is 9. When n is 2, n squared is 4, and 9n is 18. When it's 3, 
we get 9 and 27, 4, we get 16 and 36. And if you keep going, eventually you'll get to 9 when n squared is 81, but also 9n is 81. And then if you make n larger and larger, say 10, we get 190. 100, we get 10,900. If we did 1,000, we'd get 1 million and 9,000. What you see here is when we have particularly low values, the 9n is greater than the n squared. But once we get to very large values, the n squared begins to dominate. The value of n squared is much, much bigger than 9n as n becomes very, very large. So when we have an n squared, that will also dominate the 9n term, so the 9n term will also become insignificant. So we end up with 5n squared over n squared. Cancel the n squared, and the limit of this sequence is just 5. Now let's look at some typical exam questions. Finding the limit of a sequence tends to be the second part of an exam question. Let's have a look at some so we can see the first part as well. So we have a sequence with this nth term, and part A says, a sequence in the term has the value 5 over 2, work out the value of n. So we want this nth term to be equal to 5 over 2. So we just write the nth term equals 5 over 2, and we just have an equation to solve to find the value of n. To do this I would cross multiply, so multiply the left side by 2 and the right side by 3n minus 7, so you'll get 2 lots of 6n plus 2 equals 5 lots of 3n minus 7. If you expand these brackets, 2 times 6n is 12n, and 2 times 2 is plus 4, 5 times 3n is 15n, and 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. Now if we subtract 12n from both sides, we'll get 4 on the left, on the right it would be 3n take 35, add 35 to both sides, and you'll get 39 equals 3n, and then divide both sides by 3, and you'll get n equals 13. So the value of n that gets 5 over 2 is 13. 5 over 2 is the 13th term. Now here we go, it's part b. Write down the limiting value of the sequence as n tends towards infinity. So it's the plus 2 and negative 7 that will become less significant as n gets large. So we end up with 6n over 3n. We cancel out those n's. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now for this one we have another sequence with an nth term, and we're told the kth term is the first term greater than 3 over 2. So not equal to 3 over 2 this time, greater than. We need to find the value of k. So we want our nth term to be greater than, so we write a greater than symbol, 3 over 2. Again we'll just cross multiply here. So 2 lots of 3n squared plus n is greater than 3 lots of 2n squared plus 8. If we expand the left hand side we get 6n squared plus 2n is greater than the right hand side 6n squared plus 24. Now you can subtract 6n squared from both sides, so you'll end up with 2n is greater than 24 and then divide both sides by 2, so n is greater than 12. Now we haven't finished yet, we want to work out the value of k which is the first term greater than this. Since n has to be greater than 12, not equal to, we want the next term, so k would be 13. Now for part b we'll find the limiting value of the sequence. So the plus n and the plus 8 will become less significant as n gets very very large, so we end up with 3n squared over 2n squared, cancel the n squareds and we have 3 over 2 or 1.5. Thank you for watching this video, there are some exam questions in this video's description, check out what I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.